Now, the talent shortage in Singapore's biotech sector is set to grow by nearly 30% over the next decade. A report by SG Innovate says uh, the problem affects various functions and experience levels and could hamper the sector's growth. Now, to find out more, we speak to Juliana Lim, Executive Director of Talent at SG Innovate. Uh, Ms Lim, uh, Singapore sees the biotech sector as a key to its economy. In fact, it wants to be a hub. Um, this talent shortage, <clears throat> how much will it actually set this dream back? Could it even be dead in the water? Oh, good evening, ladies. I think to say that it's dead in the water is a bit excessive. Um, certainly, I think at the stage where the Singapore ecosystem is at, we are in a comfortable position where we are, whereby we do have time to grow the talent for the sector, for these companies. I mean, if we are looking at you know uh, some companies, obviously going from clinical to clinical, uh, and beyond. And effectively, uh, we are looking at a five-year to 10-year horizon whereby we can train talent for various positions in these companies. Certainly, we're not looking at numbers in terms of the scale, in terms of the thousands, but certainly these need to be the right talent with the right capabilities and the exposure that uh, given what we have in mind, I think would set us in good stead. Uh, right. Ms. Lim, when we talk about biotech, it's extremely wide. And you say you're looking for the right kind of talent, the right kind of exposure. With a country with a very large uh, workforce, for example, or, 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 or source of students, that too, you've got time and depth and width as well to, to taper down the people you have to fit these very different types of talent and exposure. Can Singapore do that? Does Singapore have that? Certainly, I think we do. Um, our universities obviously produce some of the world's best talent. In fact, our talent is uh, widely sought after, you know, worldwide, internationally. Um, and uh, uh, our job then as the ecosystem in terms of government, in terms of the companies then, would be to come up with interesting ways in which we can continue to pull our talent within Singapore, attract new talent into Singapore, and grow the talent pipeline for the emerging startups that are coming into the ecosystem. Um, end of the day, I think everybody needs to play a part, be it good government policies set things to startups and companies willing to, you know, basically put the, the stick into the game to say we are willing to train, we are willing to develop people. Um, and it's not just about importing talent uh, from outside of Singapore. I, I guess I struggle with talent being used as just this one big uh, notion, where else there, there, there's many levels of talent, as uh, Wei Su pointed out. You need those that can do research and, and those that are simply good at running a company and looking at the commercial aspects of, of, of biotech companies. So, so I'm wondering, how are you actually distinguishing between the types of talent? And mm -hmm. also, do you think um, IT or technology uh, can play a role here? Great question, Jill. In fact, I think uh, it goes back into the study that we have uh, been commissioned uh, to, to look into the tech talent or the talent that's needed in the biotech companies. And you are right, there are different types of talent across the board, and it really depends on the type of company you're talking about, be it you know, whether they are preclinical, clinical, or more mature companies. Yes, you need people with very strong research backgrounds, especially in a startup, whereby they're trying to grow their product. As the company grows, just like a child growing, you know, we need to um, put in place different types of talent, people who can bring in the investment, for example, people who can lead teams, uh, who can convince and basically you know, do business development. And obviously in the report, it does show that, that as the, the ecosystem in terms of the companies that make up the system uh, change over time up to a certain equilibrium, then you see the different types of talent uh, having needing the as these companies grow and develop. Uh, Ms. Lim, you mentioned earlier uh, that companies, biotech companies, must be willing to train, must be willing to develop the right kind of talent. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, frankly, if I were a biotech company manager, if I see better talent from abroad, I will be tempted to hire that talent because that is better for mm. my company. Uh, what incentives mm. are there for biotech companies in Singapore mm -hmm. to hire local talent mm -hmm. if they feel that foreign talent is superior? 
Well, uh, I think that uh, to say that foreign talent is superior is um, somewhat short-sighted. I think end of the day, it's about finding the right people for the right roles. So in terms of the initiatives that you're talking about, something that SG Innovate obviously works fairly closely with the different companies. There are different schemes whereby we will help reduce the cost of training, for example, uh, subsidies which tie over the cost of training individuals to meet these roles that are represent. Then, of course, we have schemes whereby you bring in foreign talent who can also train and develop such people uh, within the Singapore's context. So I think end of the day, it, it needs to be a multifaceted approach to solving this rather challenging issue. Again, like I said, this issue is not something that is unique to Singapore and it's something that everyone faces worldwide. Um, and uh, it needs a holistic solution rather than, oh, I'm just bringing in foreign talent or I'm just you know, looking at our local talent. It needs to be a mix of both. And that's why we have various subsidies to address uh, both these strategies. Oh, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Juliana Lim, Executive Director, Talent at SG Innovate.